Today, we're uncovering a $500 million Ponzi scheme called Trader's Domain. In part one, we exposed a web of scammers. We found an ongoing government investigation. But as I spoke to victims, I realized there was someone behind the curtains controlling it all. And that's when I find out there's this one guy named Ted who's making all the trades and he's running this Ponzi scheme. We now learn of this savant that is the man behind Trader's Domain. And so this is the first time I ever hear the name Ted Safranco. And I'm like, okay. who the freak is Ted? Who's Ted? That is the multi-million dollar question. And I decided- Bro, in the next three-part CoffeeZilla video, I'm just gonna watch, I'm gonna wait till they all come out. <laughs> Cause I do forget some of these people from the last time we watched. So next time I just will watch them all in order, but this time I'm gonna watch it now. The best place to look for answers was starting with the victims. Welcome to part two. My understanding of who Ted Sofranco was at the time I invested was an experienced uh, trader. He's a master trader with relationships like this all over the world, and he was internationally known and respected. Very credible Wall Street trader. I know that's bad to you know judge a book off cover, like judge a book off of their cover, but you know, he just looked like you know like a normal guy, like a Wall Street trader. You know, he like he didn't <laughs> seem like the type of guy that would mess you over. <laughs> but looking into his real past, everything showed the opposite. He didn't work on Wall Street. He got his start in 2016 when he was the student of a 23-year-old get-rich-quick guru on Instagram <laughs> named Nino Koroff. We know this because of a testimonial he filmed. Hi, everyone. My name is Ted. Uh, I've been working around right now with Nino for probably about six months. Wait, this guy is clearly older than 23. So this guy decided I want to change my life. I'm going to look up a 23 year old golden Ferrari guy on Instagram and buy his fucking coaching session. He was 24. Who? This guy was 24 at the time. My name is Ted. Uh, I've been working around right now with Nino for, for probably about six months. Really what I did is for 2016, what I tried to do is I really wanted to set myself up nice. Being a little bit older, I've been working for many years now, almost 15 <laughs> years. I wanted to have a lifestyle change. I wanted to get- Holy fuck, dude. What, is, what the fuck are you doing? This dude is clearly like many years older than fucking Nino. He's Canadian. Oh my God. Midlife Canadian crisis. He looks up a fucking Lambo <laughs> influencer on Instagram and gives him his money. Into something different to give myself a better opportunity in life. And literally, I went through social media. I found Nino on Instagram. I sort of laughed actually because I saw him with his Lambo and all his fun stuff. And me being as old as I am now, maybe, you know, 37 years old, 36 Holy years old. Holy fuck, dude! You cannot be 37 thinking this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be a 22 year old fucking scammer, influencer, Lamborghini guy. That doesn't. Oh my God. No, not one foot in the grave, but that's crazy. He did make money after all. Uh, yeah, with his own scam, I guess he learned how to scam. I couldn't really fathom how somebody was doing what they were doing at such a young age. Wow. The answer, of course, to Ted's question is that Nino was scamming people with Get Rich Quick courses, and Ted soon figured this out. He started his <laughs> own grift called the Forex Family Course, which eventually led to the launch of his very own Forex brokerage called Trader's Domain. Ted said that it would be non-manipulated as opposed to most of the scammy brokerages of the time. Oh, good. And with his business partner, David Negus, they opened their doors in 2018 found this out because I talked to the roommate at the time who witnessed everything. So my name's Jonathan Semeta. I was <laughs> roommates with David Negus at the start of 2018, pretty much for the whole duration of a year. And I witnessed the inception of Trader's Domain from the beginning. It was basically run out of the spare bedroom of our house. <laughs> That's right, we have an eyewitness who saw the beginning of this. And what he told me is that Trader's Domain was originally selling themselves as one of the good guys. Forex has a lot of shysterness in the industry. I'm sure a lot of people are aware of that. Not, and not a great term. And brokers that have bad reputations, you know, with doing shady dealings. Ted and Dave started this operation <laughs> under the premise. I'm sorry, CoffeeZilla, was that a fucking stock footage of someone typing the word Ponzi? <laughs> <laughs> you don't gotta you don't gotta spoon feed me man rip the industry i'm sure a lot of people are aware of that and there's a lot of brokers that have bad reputations you know 
with doing shady dealings. <laughs> Ted and Dave started this operation under the premise of the good guy and honesty and being for the little guy sort of thing, someone you could trust, which everybody bought. You know, Ted, Ted did have a, a good reputation in the community. The way they did this was they described themselves as an A-book brokerage, which I didn't really understand at the time, but basically means they were one of the legitimate ones. Can you just explain really briefly what the difference between A book and B book are? So A book, your orders are direct to the market and B book, basically the broker takes the opposite side of your trade. So when you lose money, they win because most, most traders lose. So a lot of, a lot of, a lot of brokerages go B book because they make money off the trader. They're not, you know, your mark, your orders aren't actually going to the market. It's just the broker basically shamming you. Okay, to summarize what he said real quick, because it's important. Forex brokers, which are A book, it just means that your trades are real. B booking is when the trades are kept in house and, and things can be faked, they can be messed with. And this is why Ted said that his brokerage was A book. He couldn't mm. scam you. And he claimed this repeatedly. But the question is, is that true? With stories of changing trades, I wasn't so sure. Right. And then all of a sudden, everything magically got erased. And they said, oh, the server's refreshed. We had to refresh the servers. <laughs> like that somehow changed all the trades, right? <laughs> and not only were the stories shady, when I asked the roommate about it, he told me about a very strange conversation he overheard. I was in my room one day and I overheard a conversation and I thought I caught something about B booking, switching people from A book to B book. And so I asked Dave about it and he blatantly said to me, he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, if people are going to be losing, we might as well be booked though, because we're just leaving money on the table. It was kind of a shock to me because that's, <laughs> you know, kind of went against everything that they had sort of built this platform on. So I just didn't, didn't really know how to take that, but I just took it for what it was. Wow. If this is true, this means their whole story is fake. Yeah. But of course, claiming this is a pretty huge accusation and I didn't want to do it on the word of just one person because it would mean that everything was built on lies and fraud. So I wanted more proof. So to do this, I set up a Discord channel to investigate Trader's Domain and invited all the victims to come share with me what they had found. <laughs> he got two panda reacts. Evidence, including a document which they said would prove that they were B-booking. These people showed me an invoice from a platform called B2Broker addressed to Traders Domain FX, which had a very important line item. Okay. Quote, minimum monthly payment for the use of B-Book service. Why would Traders Domain need to pay for a B-Book service if they were A-Book? <laughs> now, of course, we also need to talk about who is B to broker. They call themselves a white label solution for brokerages and exchanges, which simply means they sell a brokerage product that you can slap your name on. And it appears that this yeah. is exactly what Ted Safranco did, which means that the back end of Trader's Domain and what Ted is even selling is just yeah. a It's just like drop shipping, but for financial products. <laughs> Instead of getting cheap Alibaba fucking watches, you're getting a fucking Forex B-Book trader and selling it to someone else with your name on it. Rebranded product. So we'll put B to broker on the board over here because they're gonna be key to understanding this whole scam. Because so is e-booking I... legal? Yeah, I mean, my understanding is it is as long as they pay you out. It's like this. It's like if I said, I'm starting Atriox trading firm and I'll help you manage your trades. And then you tell me, you give me $100,000 and say, I wanna buy fucking all Dogecoin. And it's like, if I know that you're gonna lose money on that, then I might as well just keep your money and then just pay you out whatever that would be worth when you try to take it out. Cause you're probably gonna lose. And that's what they do. You buy a bunch of Dogecoin. I just check what it's worth when you buy it. And then when you sell it later on, you would only get like back 10k or whatever i just give you the 10k pocket the 90 difference <laughs> uh and that's what they do because they just know that most traders trades are stupid and that's why they be book they just keep your money and then pay you back whatever you're gonna lose because they know you're gonna lose i don't know the exact legality behind it but the functional difference is not there as long as they pay you back exactly what you owed when you're owed it uh, that's a really good idea i should do that yeah you should start your own scam what if doge moons well, the idea is the few traders that get lucky are balanced out by the many, 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 many who fail. So like you have enough liquidity, you have enough money on hand to pay out the ones that do well. I'm not certain on the legality of the whole thing, but my understanding is it is legal. I found more of these invoices. I realized 
Vita Broker may have helped facilitate this whole thing. All apparently for the low, low price of a thousand. So if they did this legally, it would be fine. Well, the problem is that they're telling everyone their A book. So they're already lying. They're saying, no, we're, we're booking your trades 100% with the market. Their trades are real. Nobody's winning if you lose. And then they're lying. They're not even doing, they're not even running their own B book. They just got a third party site to do the whole thing and slapped their name on it. Everything they're doing is lying. They're lying and scamming and frauding. And also it sounds like the whole thing might end up being a Ponzi scheme in general, more than just that. So dollars a month for this fee. Now, what these several invoices do is not only corroborate the story the roommate was telling us about B booking, it means that the trades and the crazy returns are all likely fake. It was all a fraud based on a software Ted himself never even built. And of course, now the question is, okay, if the trades are fake, where did the money go? Because the investment money was very much real, even if the trades were fake. We know for a fact that over a hundred million dollars was invested based on the CFTC's estimate, but based on what I have, I think it's significantly more. Either way, we're talking about an extremely large amount of cash. So it had to go somewhere. I mean, we know from our first episode that a lot of it went to this company called CCAP Holdings, but what happened after that? As I began to ask myself this question, I was contacted by an anonymous source who found out that I was investigating. As I said, I had made it public at that point. And they told me they had a friend who might know something hmm. more, something that could quote, show B book activities, money laundering and fake invoice. Quack, learn how to do this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 2023 and none of my marketing videos ever have the thing where you show some text and you highlight it. This is, this is standard now. Everybody does this, it's fucking awesome. We need to have this. This needs to be part of the fucking lexicon. I'm not coming back to YouTube until we get the fucking highlighted text thing. They asked if I was interested, of course I was. And when this friend got in touch, they claimed to have literally 2000 plus files and documents on Trader's Domain. Sheesh. I was a little skeptical at first, but when the files showed up, even I was surprised. It took me weeks to go through all the documents, but eventually a pattern started to emerge. Bad lifting technique. <laughs> the more I pulled on the threads, the more I realized this was all. I like connected. his production value. It's hype. He goes all out. All right. I think I get it. I think I understand how Trader's Domain took in money. If you look at our old understanding of the company, we had the basics but we're missing several things, okay? It starts with the sponsors. There were micro okay. celebrities or influential people who were paid very well to bring in investors, money. And the more you brought in, the more you were paid, which was actually explained to me by a sponsor who had $10 million underneath him. So you've got 10 million under you that's locked up. How many does the guy above you have? He won't even tell me, but millions. He was getting like, probably half a million a month just in payouts. Like I, I was doing well out there. I was getting paid like 20, 30,000 a month. Oi, bruv, dude. Who trusted their money with this fuck? This chav, dude. I wouldn't trust him with a fucking soccer ball because you might not name it correctly. This dude sounds like a fucking AI trained on Peaky Blinders. It's crazy people gave him $10 million to trade. All right, so these sponsors would get a cut of the money that they brought in which meant that they went out and flexed on social media to bring in more clients. Some bragged about yachts, some invited people to DM them for 10% monthly ROI deals. <laughs> Either way, once the victims were on the hook, they would be instructed to go one of two payment routes. The first option was cash. They would wire money to a US-based bank like CCAP Holdings with a generic memo that said services and definitely not Forex or investments because that would trigger red flags. And once word went out that the wire had been sent, before the money even got there, Trader's Domain would immediately credit them on the back end with fake money, which we know from interviews I did. He would credit my account without ever having any money. 
before I ever gave them money. You know what I mean? So the numbers were there before you ever got. Before I ever paid for anything. So that day I get a trader's domain confirmation and it shows up in my trader's domain, half a million dollars sitting in my account. The next day Chase calls me and they go, oh, we just want to verify this is you. And I'm like, oh, you haven't released the wire? Oh my God. So they had accredited your account before the money yeah. had ever hit. Yeah, before the money had ever hit. All right, but if the money on Trader's Domain was fake, where did the real money go? Well, I believe they had a money laundering operation to get the money offshore. This is based on a series of invoices I was given showing money being sent right. from onshore banks, Ted Safranco, David Negus, Tin Tran controlled, like say capital. And then they would send that to offshore companies, shell companies, which were very suspicious. For example, we found invoices sending $100,000 to a company called Safe Seal Technology. <laughs> Why? In another one, they sent a million dollars to Discover Tour Plus. Now, this one in particular had a website, and if you go to discovertourplus.com, they claim to be a travel agency. But there's nothing to... <laughs> it's like so obviously a fucking slap together default website yeah they just happen to send them a million dollars dude for a fucking beachcomber golf resort and spa actually buy i tried booking my own vacation which i desperately need at this point because i'm way too deep in this investigation but none of the links would let me book <laughs> so this website appears to just be a front <laughs> for funneling millions of dollars <laughs> offshore Besides, who even pays a million dollars to a travel agency if you it's funny how much money is changing hands under such fucking flimsy ass. It's just crazy to have like so much at stake. They're just so flagrant about it. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so funny to not put in any effort. If you're a Forex investment company, especially does that multiple times. Of course, the alternate explanation is that the reason you might send money from a shell company in the US to an offshore shell company is to launder that money because then you can now declare that million dollars the travel agency took in the result of a bustling business instead of fraud. Now, that's my theory, but we have dozens of these invoices which seem to confirm it. And you might expect that this was the main way Trader's Domain moved large chunks of cash, but you'd be wrong. Because in 2023, laundering money through banks is like communicating with smoke signals instead of text messages. No, the real way to launder money yeah. has changed. Today, it's crypto. Yeah. So this brings us to option two. Crypto of how to is move the money. fucking <laughs> crypto is the main way traders domain moved money. It was perfect for them, and it was the main way they circumvented regular. It's honestly probably the only actual boots on the ground use case of crypto is for criminals, for people who want to not be detected by government, to want to launder money, to want to avoid taxes. Yeah, gambling and fucking illegal activity has been the only actual use case of crypto. Fraud and money laundering. Yeah. Regulation. Recall at the beginning of this show, I told you that offshore companies couldn't solicit U.S. investors, but Trader's Domain told people that up front. They said, quote, Trader's Domain does not solicit U.S. clients. However, they would claim underneath that, quote, just to note, we have crypto accounts <laughs> available, which is sort of like saying, hey, we don't let in U.S. clients through the front door, but just to note, we have a back door. Because when you went to their website to sign up... It's so funny. To put it in the same image is so incriminating. Just a note. I kid you not. As By country way, of about origin, this. you could select your country as the country of crypto. <laughs> which, unsurprisingly, some people actually did. Uh, one of the early things that felt weird to me is that you couldn't register as baby. a U.S. citizen on his website. It was crypto. You had to go in as a crypto user. I can still show you on my account where I'm listed as a crypto user and not a U.S. citizen. That is clearly illegal. But the reason <laughs> it matters is not that they circumvented regulation. People do that all the time. It's the scale this was all happening on. This wasn't a few dollars. This is hundreds of millions 
I mean a single one of their payment processors in crypto complained in a recent lawsuit that the founder believed that, quote, the trader's domain is clearly a Ponzi scheme. They have moved over $50 million in cryptocurrency and U.S. currency directly to the trader's domain systems. <laughs> Not only that, a different payment processor also had their transaction data with trader's domain leaked to us. With the help of a blockchain intelligence company called Crystal Blockchain, we traced even more money that had come in. According to them, roughly 450 million Jesus Christ. into Trader's domain. And that combined with the 50 million from that other crypto payment processor is where we arrived to our $500 million estimate. Now, bear in mind, this is just crypto. This is not talking about fiat here. And this is real money that went in, not fake Ponzi gains. And at this point in the investigation, I'm feeling pretty confident. We have two really big things. The first is that the scale of this thing is huge, probably bigger than even the government believes it is. But I also feel extremely confident we have proof of fraud. And the only thing left to do- guess, What I want to know is what happens to these guys behind it. Did they get away with fucking millions, hundreds of millions of dollars? They should be made off in jail, dude. They uh, Is confront the man behind it all, Ted Safranco. And this is also the thing that I've been putting off doing the whole time, to be honest, because the entire investigation, as I spoke to people, I was warned not to reach out because Ted was well known for going after anyone who went after his brokerage. He allegedly said things like, quote, you want to come after my brokerage, you have a death wish in messages. What a nice guy. And I am going to put a bounty on your head. There were a lot more of these. And of course, he also famously threatened people on video. I take a flight to the UK right now and just f***ing show up and curb stomp their heads. Yeah, I get arrested. So what? I win because they're dead. So yeah, the guy is kind of a psycho. So I was very nervous about doing this. And so I decided to go to the bar and get me a little- He looks like a fucking munchkin, dude. He looks like a leprechaun. <laughs> It's funny to see the fucking hearts rolling up, by the way. It's so tough for him to say these threats. First of all, while the Instagram fucking rainbow hearts are flying off. And then second of all, while he's about to fucking move chocolate around Willy Wonka's factory. Yeah, I get arrested. So what? I win because they're dead. So yeah, the guy is kind of a psycho. So I was very nervous about doing this. And so I decided to go to the bar and get me a little bit of liquid courage. Come on, copy. You've been sitting here for two hours. Are you gonna do it or not? Give me, give me this one more shot, okay? And then I'll do it. Here goes nothing. Quack! Do I have to say it? <laughs> Quack, I'm noticing that whenever I cut to a different scene in Marketing Monday, a CGI robot doesn't show up and serve me coffee and say, hey, coffee cow, are you feeling down? Want me to moo with you? And then we talk about fucking Facebook stock going down or something. <laughs> like, where's that, Quack? Fucking get on it, brother. Come on, Ted. I bet you he's not even gonna answer. Answer the... F Come on. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Please record your message. I knew it. That settles that. Thanks, King. You want another drink? I guess so. You humans are such odd creatures. You were nervous about calling, yet you seem upset he didn't answer? I was concerned. I mean, but <laughs> once I was committed, I, I don't know. The coffee verse is crazy, bro. <laughs> he has truly built a fucking uh, lore, characters, storylines. It just feels a little anticlimactic, I guess. Maybe it's for the best. Not everything has a Hollywood ending. You do the best you can, and sometimes you have to enjoy a consolation prize. What's that? How about a drink with a friend? Wait, I thought you couldn't drink. Take the shot, coffee. <laughs> I've been watching you hide. I just close my eyes. Oh shit. Music video? My dear, if you keep pulling that thread. I'll unravel in your Oh? Uh, hello? 
Ah, Before cliffhanger. Continue, obviously, I've spoken to my counsel. We we know about your YouTube channel now. We reviewed it. I mean, there's really nothing of substance on there, to be honest. I think it's more of a glorified <laughs> clickbait channel. I'm in chats right now on Telegram. And he's still in there actively saying that he's trading. You can think anything you want. You can turn around and say that I am gaming the system. I'm gaming my followers. That is such a chicken shit response from a total coward. No accountability at all. I'm the enemy of the state for most people because of what I do and how I do it. <laughs> Nobody knows anything about his wife because they don't have the resources that I have. Oh, Jesus Christ. My resources Christ. can find out every little thing about you. You will see the amount of destruction I leave. Damn, what's funny is like, Every time that guy's saying something like that, CoffeeZilla isn't thinking, oh man, I'm in trouble. He's thinking this is going to be a fucking great YouTube cliffhanger. <laughs> Everything you're saying is giving me fucking a million more views on this video. Please, please give me your fucking Watchmen style threats. Who's that guy from Watchmen? The Rorschach. <laughs> he sounds like fucking one of those guys that idolizes Rorschach. <laughs> uh, another great episode by CoffeeZilla. I'm very excited for part three. Let's watch CoffeeZilla's video. Summary of the first two parts. Maybe you'll have that in there. I destroyed a $500 million Ponzi scheme. So summary of the first two parts, there was a Ponzi scheme where people were basically posting about awesome flexes on social media. You know, they had fucking a new car or a new house or whatever. And they said they did it all by trading with this amazing master trader who like had a proprietary algorithm that would always go up <laughs> and they put their money in and then they it went up and they took it out and they bought real things with it and they told all their friends and then there it was a classic ponzi scheme right so that's what happened in the first two and then in the second one near the end the guy who ran the ponzi scheme started trying to like hire a detective to find shit about coffeezilla and like threaten to kill him for exposing it and all that shit so that's where we're at now sorry finale of this video got a little messy and it's going to be up to you to put the pieces together things might be a bit out of order. oh previously on we now learn of this savant that is the man behind trader's domain it took me weeks to go through all trader's the domain was the name of it but eventually a pattern started to emerge i was in my room one day and i overheard a conversation and i I thought I caught something about B booking, switching people from A book to B book. And so I asked Dave about it and he blatantly said to me, he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, if people are going to be losing, you might as well B book though, because we're just leaving money on the table. We traced even more money that had come in. According to them, roughly 400. Again, A book and B book is where um, if there's an exchange and you put your money into it and tell it to buy a stock, make a trade. If they assume you're gonna make a bad trade, which 80% of people do, they just won't make the trade, pocket the money, <laughs> and then when that stock goes down, they just give you the less amount. <laughs> they just keep the difference. Um, that's B booking. Is like, B booking is basically assuming that 80% of your traders will lose money, and so you just don't even make their trades. You just watch what they would have made and give them that. Um, it's no functional difference to the user, I guess. But it is, uh, you know, it's bad incentives because they really want you to lose so they can keep the difference. What happens if it goes up? Yeah, about 20% of people will go up, right? But they use the winnings from 80% of the losers to pay off the winners <laughs> and then keep a bunch of the difference. That's the idea. Uh, I don't know the, it is illegal in some circumstances and some it's not, I believe. So I don't, I don't know exactly when or how it's illegal, but as a as a user, you always want it to be a book where they actually make your trades and buy the actual stock, and so that they have no incentive to see you lose. 150 million went into Trader's domain. Coffeezilla. I don't think he's ever dealt with someone my size before, and nobody knows anything about his family because they don't have the resources I have. Hello? I knew immediately it was Ted. I could tell his voice. I raced to the office, but you could tell by what I was wearing, I wasn't expecting the conversation. Hey, Steven, how you doing? 
Hey, Ted, thanks for taking the time, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I'll keep it quick with you. No problem. Okay. We weren't ready for it, but you've been on this case for months. <laughs> oh, I was prepared for it. I just wasn't expecting it. I mean, he seemed really hostile at first, and like he was just trying to get me off the phone real quick. <laughs> so obviously, mission one. Right. Keep the guy talking. I guess if since you don't have a lot of time, let me just start firing off some questions for you, and uh, you'll forgive me if uh, you know they're they're hard questions. But I think you know, given the time constraint, let's make sure we get to the good stuff. You know. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll clarify items up until 2020. Because after 2020, I was no longer the owner of the platform. So I don't know what happened with the platform. And I think just to be honest with you, uh, is crazy. before we continue, obviously I've spoken to my counsel. We, we know about your YouTube channel now. We reviewed it. I mean, there's really nothing of substance on there, to be honest. I think it's more of a glorified uh, just clickbait channel. Um, I, I see what you've done. You've taken a lot of the local uh you should really be more like sniper wolf my favorite youtuber there's a little bit more substance on her channel and i found your channel to be a little bit lacking uh, <laughs> uh hot topics for the for the time and tried to monetize it so i mean i appreciate your effort i think what you're going to do is you're going to have a hard time with this fact finding mission due to the people that you're working with so i'll let you do what you need to do that's why i said we only needed five minutes um, I can't really entertain your conversation because there's really no merit for it in my situation. <laughs> okay, wait a second, wait a second. Back up. Ted said he doesn't own Trader's Domain anymore? Because after 2020, I was no yeah. longer the owner of the platform. Interesting. How's that possible? You know, I was actually expecting this. When I was going back through all those documents, I saw him trying to set this up. It's kind of a lot to explain. I like the conceit of creating this robot character so he can, instead of talking head to the audience, make it a conversation. It's almost like a movie. <laughs> it's interesting. I like that he's experimenting. Might as well bore me. No one else in here is going to. Bar's dead tonight. All right, I'll tell you. Have you ever heard of the Panama Papers? Panama Papers? Sure. Big news story in 2016. Leaked papers show that rich people own everything. Not exactly a headline, if you ask me. No, 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 that, that's not the real story. We knew they owned everything. The real headline was they that they taxes. kept it offshore. And the question is, how did they keep that a secret? I don't know. Good lawyers? More like bad laws. In places like Panama, you could own a company, but not be on the paperwork. And that's useful how? Well, you can hide millions in companies you control, but if anyone asks you about it, you're off the books. Hmm. I see. The true owner is hidden. That's right. It's called beneficial ownership, and the Panama Papers was just the start. Interesting. Okay, I get that. But what does this have to do with Trader's Domain? I think what we should do is um, kill whoever leaks anything about the Panama Papers. <laughs> That's my idea. I think what we should do is we should have them murdered and then not talk about it anymore. I don't know. Does anyone else agree with me? Can we just murder whoever leaks it, and then we could all ignore it and move on? That sounds like the best, because then, I got, you know, I got other shit to worry about. H Rock, there actually was a reporter killed. Oh, crazy. That's crazy. It's almost like I was doing a bit about that. <laughs> it's, crazy. it's almost like I wasn't actually suggesting that we murder the reporter, and I was kind of like, but, you know. <laughs> Thanks, though. Well, we <laughs> our friend Ted decided to use a similar playbook. Check this out. Here are the founding documents of Trader's Domain. In it, we see the first director's minutes where Ted Sofranco and David Negus got in this whole thing. Okay. They get half the company's shares. They but would be fucking Canadians. Sorry, but come on. Is there any bad thing that can't be traced back to the fucking North? To the fucking America's hat, dude? I just, I... <laughs> you, I've heard that even Hitler was born in Canada. <laughs> That's too far. <laughs> I heard he emigrated at a young age to Germany. I'm just saying. I let our hair breathe. Yeah, we need the hat off, dude. Uh, Hitler actually did take inspiration from Alberta's eugenics program. Oh, that's too dark for me, though. I'm just trying to joke. Canada was the art college that turned him down. Mm. Here's the key thing. In January 14, 2020, something changes. A new director gets appointed, someone named Arthi Kaniger, and watch this. 
after he gets in, Ted resigns. Mm. Oh, and it's in January 14th, 2020. That's why he says he doesn't own it. That's right. Uh, but also, I found another document dated a little later, three days later, in fact, an acknowledgement letter admitting that he was the ultimate beneficial uh -huh. of the trader's domain. Wait, then doesn't that mean he still controls it? Yes, exactly. So this new director is just the fall guy. Yes, now you're getting it. I, that's what I wanted to tell Ted in the first place. <laughs> you know, I rarely give you compliments, but I really think you got him. I thought he did, but... <laughs> okay. okay, Coffee, again, I'm with you. I'm with you, Coffee, but in these fake conversations, you can't gas yourself up with the robot because you are writing his dialogue. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm on board. I think you've done an awesome thing with this video. But you can't have a fucking side tangent with robot just says, well, Coffee, and hey, you're looking pretty tall today. <laughs> and you're, you're looking fresh. Ted wasn't going to go down without a fight. Also, you said that in 2020 you signed over the account, but I have an acknowledgement letter from you that says that you actually are the ultimate beneficiary owner. Do you want to address that? No, oh. because it's not true. So this signature on January 17th, 2020, where you acknowledge that all legal actions which may be taken by the company's director, which you did sign over the director or shareholder, including but not limited to signing of agreements, documents, are confirmed by and agreed with me as the company's UBO, and I have full control over directors or shareholders' actions. And this is your signature at the bottom. Is that fake? Uh, yeah, because what was that document stamped? I'm sorry, you're saying this signed document from you <laughs> is fake. Um, all corporations have a seal. So is there a seal on that document? There's no seal on this document. Okay, so like Ted, I said, you, you should Ted, really... you know, Ted, why would somebody fake your signature on this? Come on. Damn, get owned, Coffee. I'm sorry, dude. No seal. Stamp diff. Sorry. Wow. Actually, out outlawed. Uh, I don't see a seal, bro. I don't see a stamp, little bro. <laughs> Wax seal with a king's ring. If the seal don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> um the reason why that my passport's been passed around that's expired mm -hmm. uh the reason why there's documents of mine that's been expired and passed around yeah uh, i mean like i said i mean please go on a better fact finding mission oh uh, what is he talking about now well check this out ted is basically saying that the document we have isn't valid because it doesn't have a seal that looks like this on the document <laughs> Ours just has his signature. <laughs> dude, that's the fucking what? seal. That's a fucking word art, dude. That's what you can make in fucking PowerPoint. <laughs> Where ours just has his signature. Woo! This guy is slick, coffee. I think his ability to lie is both his strength and his weakness, though. Mm. I mean, yes, he is very good, but probably also why he picked up the phone in the first place. Oh, he thought he could bluff past you. Right, and he's actually done it before. In digging through Ted's documents, I found I wasn't the only person he tried this trick on. Back in 2019, the Ontario Securities Commission even investigated him. You mean like the Canadian government? <laughs> yep, they already looked into him and Ted lied his way out of it. I even have the emails to prove it. I mean, check this out. At the time, Ontario was concerned about Traders Domain soliciting Canadian investors in 2019. So Ted said they didn't have that many and they'd be removing them from the platform by July 1st. And then what? And then that was that. I mean, it was over. So what? They just stopped taking Canadian clients? Oh, of course not. <laughs> the investigation stopped. But I found people being recruited from Canada as early as directly after the fact. People like Armand, a customer who said he was from Ontario and wanted to sign up. And he said there was no option for it. And so they replied, just use crypto as the country code. <laughs> the same thing happened with I another- I forgot about that, yeah. They just they made a fucking crypto country that all the US and Canadian residents were signing up for. Or Canadian, when he asked how to open an account, their response was, please use crypto. It's funny that he just openly lied to the basically Canadian SEC and they just fucking dropped it because I watched that Bernie Madoff documentary and it was the same fucking thing, dude. The SEC investigates him like 10 times, and every time he goes, nah. 
Nothing's wrong here. He just lies. And they go, oh, well, then <laughs> oh, well, our mistake. <laughs> and they just leave. Like, he just goes, nuh uh. It's crazy how badly they failed at their jobs for, for many, many years and let that, that Ponzi scheme go from like relatively small to $68 billion. Yeah. It, it, and like, there's a guy, there's this guy, I mean, in the documentary, it's crazy because there's a guy who works on Wall Street and he looks at Bernie Madoff's numbers and he's like, Wait a minute, this is obviously fake. He His line only goes up. <laughs> if stocks have a good day, he makes money. If they have a bad day, he makes money. He makes money every day. It, it's it's so consistent. It's so obviously a fucking fraud. And so he writes this all down. He has like a perfect, you know, he mathematically proves it. He writes everything and all these red flags. He sends it to the SEC, like signed, sealed, delivered, a, a fucking full case. They look at it. They investigate for like one second. He goes, nuh-uh. <laughs> and then they, they just drop it. <laughs> And over like the next 15 years, he emails them like 12 times with more information and more proof. And they just never do anything about it. It's so fucked. It's so fucked. Crypto as the country code. Yeah, Harry Markopoulos was the guy. I can't believe they got away with this. Yeah, well, it actually gets worse because in 2021, Ontario decided to investigate them again. No way. This time they caught them though, right? Nope. Ted lied again. He told the investigator, this hope the all is thing. well. We're not affiliated with this organization since early 2020. Huh, that's what he told you too. Correct. And I think that that's why Ted and David pulled this trick in the first place, to avoid the feds. Of course. Now that you mention it, they were first investigated in 2019. So in 2020, they do this. He's already gotten away with it twice. So what are you gonna do different? Well, this time we have a bit more evidence. We got that signed document, but we also have even better, a video from Ted saying he owns Trader's Domain after he wasn't supposed to. Oh. So Pilgrim's is located offshore. It is owned over here by myself. You haven't been able to explain oh. why this isn't the I, case. It seems to I've me that you, you're on the record saying you own Trader's Domain after 2020, right? You're on the record saying that on video. I can send you the video if you want. Then we've got uh, you a signed document saying that you're the ultimate no beneficiary seal. owner. No seal. And then we have to ask ourselves, why would you resign from a company that's making so much money to some... Coffee, does the video have a seal? I didn't see a seal in the video. I don't see a seal on the video. I don't see a seal on the document. It seems like you're showing up sealless, bro. Sham director. Did the you sign it over out of the goodness of your heart? Or did you sign it over sign it and it over. secure control? I didn't sign over the... Con I didn't sign over the the company for the goodness of my heart there was a sale made uh so once again like i said you don't really have your back how much money did you make from trader's domain zero dollars <laughs> so you started it and you just sort of profited nothing you didn't make a dime nope you say you sold trader's domain in 2020 that's what you say yep how much did yep. you sell it for uh, i think it was forty thousand. Right, right, but what I'm asking you is why would you sell a company that has millions of dollars in deposits is a successful offshore foreign exchange brokerage. Uh, why would you sell that for $40,000? Because I had bigger plans. <laughs> why wouldn't you sell Trader's Domain for its true book value? Because I don't care about money. <laughs> ah, okay. Maybe you care about money, I don't. Oh. Damn, get owned. Honestly, this guy's got you in a corner, Coffee. He makes you look like a greedy fool. While this high-minded Chad is out here not caring about money, he needs seals on his documents, which you don't have. He's risen you. He's outrisen you. Damn, this dude can lie. <laughs> this dude's. Uh, you, it's funny as Coffee was talking about him. Like this guy's a master liar. He's a master manipulator <laughs> who's conned the government twice. And like his whole thing is nuh uh. <laughs> I guess that just works, dude. That's crazy. Our institutions are so bad, bro. His whole thing is nuh uh. No, I made zero dollars off it. <laughs> I don't even care about money in my financial fucking company. Oh, brother, this guy's a liar. <laughs> yeah, you don't say. Well, what does he care about? According to him, uh, the downfall of society. Mm. I don't agree with society at all. I think a lot of people, including yourself, are very delusional in terms of what you think society is doing. What do you think society's doing? Well, you're contributing to it. But but contributing to what? Uh, the downfall of society through social media. 
and through the ability <laughs> of people like yourself to let them cook generate revenue cook. based on what i would say maybe i don't want to maybe the hysteria is the wrong word or maybe you know the latest gossip the latest <laughs> information <Ted> you're <laughs> When I think of CoffeeZilla's channel, I think of the latest gossip. <laughs> Bro, he has so many videos where him and that fucking robot just sit at the bar and talk shit. Just talk goss. Hot goss about who kissed who, dude. Aren't right. the latest gossip. Yeah, so this you're monetizing. Is, this is a gigantic Ponzi scheme where people are suffering. Doesn't any of that matter to you? Once again, this is your benefit, not mine. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is a bunch of clients come to me. They say that there's, there's this giant Ponzi scheme. Ted Safranco runs it. I find your name over all the documents. Then I come to you and you're telling me, oh, this is a salacious thing. This is just gossip. This is news of the day. If a $300 million Ponzi scheme, or let's say the CFTCs, right? A $145 million Ponzi scheme. Let's even say it's a $10 million Ponzi scheme. If a $10 million Ponzi scheme is not worth talking about what is <laughs> the lack of family values uh the way that people try and destroy other people <laughs> oh shit dude true let him cook and he fucking shut this up a meal yes he's spitting why the fuck are we talking about ponzi schemes Talk about family values, bro. People's lives but, by But Ted, you, don't you think that the person who ran this Ponzi scheme destroyed people's lives? You don't you think they're to contributing to the destruction of family values? <laughs> you know? Well, I, I, I think when you look at this circumstance, as you quote, call it a Ponzi, whatever you're <laughs> investigating, <laughs> uh, maybe ask those clients of yours that you're investigating if um, they had free will to make decisions. And maybe but if they were misled, right? <laughs> if they were misled and lied to, by who? Well, by you, Ted. By me? Yeah, yeah, by you. Can you believe it? No, I can't believe it. I can't believe any of it. Neither could any of the victims. That's I spoke so to. funny. What do you think about Andrew Tate needs to learn from this guy? <laughs> This dude's the fucking Rizzler. Got it figured out, dude. He's, an, he's a godlike liar. You know, maybe it's your responsibility because it's your free will to invest. He's pushed that narrative before in the chat, making like uh, nobody ever solicited any money or anything like that. But meanwhile, that's all bullshit. That is such a chicken response from a total coward. Oh my God. <laughs> so no accountability at all. I mean, this, this is, is crook, sociopathic bro. behavior, right? This is what a real sociopath does. They they detach themselves from their behavior and they blame their victims. I was getting angry at this point, given the disconnect between the damage this guy caused and the absolute lack of empathy. Did you at least show him that damage? I mean, I tried to. When a guy tells me that his brother mortgaged his house to invest in Trader's Domain you don't feel like you have any culpability with that. Who told them the mortgage the house? They're trying to better their lives. You understand that, right? To support well, problems. I mean, uh, you know, people can make bad financial decisions. Like if you go <laughs> and take all your money and punt it on fucking Dogecoin right now, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, what I'm saying, the problem is this guy lied. He lied about what he was doing with the money. It's a pot, you're just keeping it all in an account. He wasn't investing in it at all. He had no fucking proprietary. He lied about his algorithm. He lied about the risk. He lied about what he was doing. That That's the problem. It's not that people can't make bad choices with their money. That's not what we're blaming him for. We're blaming him for lying and telling them that there was less risk than there was, that he had a system, that he had it. And it was all fake. That's fucking, <laughs> that's fraud. That, that's open and shut financial fraud. Probably, ostensibly, his family. You know, you talk about caring about these family values. Ted, this guy's trying to support his family. Don't you think that's By a good mortgage. thing? But there was no stamp. Yeah, there was no seal. <laughs> so actually, I don't know who to believe, bro. It's fucked. It's like this guy seems like he's an outright piece of shit liar, but then he caught CoffeeZilla with the stamp thing. No seal, no deal. <laughs> and plus, he is promoter of family values, which is very based. So 
really tough. I think I'm going to do a mogul nail. I'm just going to both sides it. <laughs> I think I've decided that these guys are both, uh, you know, they need to learn to get along. Honestly. I think both of these people, CoffeeZilla and Ted Frankos, I think they have some good points on both sides. There's the seal thing. There's the, and so I feel like just, let's just figure it out, you know? In it out? Not really. You're taking shelter and you're- To abusing. invest money, to invest money. A mom put uh, $10,000 to try to invest in his her kid's tuition. Do you not care about so, any of this? These family so value, these families. Well, I'm I'm thinking right now you're giving me two situations where uh, people have made poor choices, and now to trust I, you as the owner of the Pam account and the person who ran it. Once again, couldn't tell you. I mean, we have you on video saying you ran it, so we don't have to uh, trust you on this. I'm just stating what you said. I'm just repeating your words back to you. So you don't feel any culpability for -uh. what you did. -uh. There. I mean, you're saying I'm destroying the fabric of you know, family values. Don't you think you are? No. Man. Nope. -uh. And I thought I was heartless. <laughs> it's honestly frightening to hear someone like that on the other end of the line. It's like talking to a shell of a human being. Uh, no offense. None taken. Did you run the Pam? The Pam account? Which one? Any of them. Did you run any of the Pam, the, the high risk Pam account, the one that was trading so well? I don't know. You don't, you don't know if you're running it or not? No. Um, how long we run the PAM system for? Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, people have liked it. Um, I don't I, know. I don't well, know I'm doing it. IDK, LOL. <laughs> Why did this guy take the interview? I mean, this is fucked. It's crazy. I don't know. No. Nuh uh. Nope. I don't know. It's not difficult for me to trade. Um, Trading is easy for me. It'll be basically, you know, when I decide I'm bored. So you say, quote, how have long you will you run the PAM system for? Um, I don't know. People have liked it. I don't mind doing it. It's not difficult for me to trade. Trading's easy for me. It'll basically be, you know, <laughs> when I decide I'm bored. That wasn't you. Don't know what context that is. But you're just, it, I'm reading you the quote. It's you talking <laughs> about the PAM system. You're saying, talking about trading in the PAM. -uh. You're saying you ran nope. it. Don't remember that. I don't remember. <laughs> How convenient. Yeah, the funny thing is, the victim said he was just talking to them about trading. I'm in chats right now on Telegram, and where he's claiming to be that Sheesh. still today, he's still in there actively saying that he's trading. There are a couple of bad days happened, and he's like saying, "You guys are stressing me out. I'm getting thousands of DMs from angry people. Do you think I'm not going to have a hard time trading with all this pressure and stress?" So he's still claiming he's the trader. So the fact that he's telling you that. He's not aware if he's ever traded on that. I mean, that it's just, who traded then, dude? Who's, who's the trader? At this point, I don't know what to do. Ted's basically <sighs> pleading dementia. I don't recall. Ugh. Sounds like pleading the fifth to me. It's pretty surprising coming from Mr. Family Values because ultimately, that's who is hurt by all this, is the families. Do you think it's wrong that Algo Capital told its clients that it was running an uh, algorithm bot when in actual fact, it was just you trading the PAM? Whatever they told their clients, you probably have to ask them about. I wouldn't know what they're telling it. Fine. <laughs> I do think I should ask about it. I, I'm just asking for your value judgment. Do you think they're destroying family values with that, perhaps? How they decide to run their business, if that's what they're doing, that's up to them. I don't <laughs> judge other people. Oh, come on. You were judging me a second ago. <laughs> well, yeah, because you actually <laughs> do something that I've researched. I don't know what those people do. He doesn't know. Why? Bro, this guy's he fucking... <laughs> In circle. I don't judge other people. Oh, well, except for you. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course for you. <laughs> Obviously, I was judging you, Coffee, because <laughs> you're attacking me. Bro just loves lying. Yeah, he's not a very good liar, though. Shocking. He's the one taking money from them. Yeah, I know. Our conversation at this point had basically run its course. He'd stopped giving me real answers. Although, when he got the last word, I found it funny what he was still focused on. Mr. Family Values was still talking about the money. Well, this has been a very educational uh, call, believe it or not. Thank you for your time. Yeah, good luck with the monetization. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dad. Good luck with your $300 million bonds scheme. <laughs> monetization. Simple. <laughs> Pretty good tape. You can hear he's rattled, Coffee.
But... Oh, what now? Well, like you said, what now? Ted denies everything. Government already investigated him twice and failed. What's the smoking gun? Well, he was lying about Trader's Domain. He was lying about running the trading. We even want video of that. Sure, but what about the fake trades? You mean the bee booking? That's the real stuff. <laughs> you have solid evidence there? I mean, yeah, we've got invoices. We've got an eyewitness. That's good, but they're just going to deny that. You think I need more? I hate to be the one to tell you this, because you'll love this. Mm. But yeah, you need absolute proof. Fair enough, I guess. Well, wait, wh what makes you think I'd like to hear that? I didn't say you'd like it, you love it. The chase coffee, you can't live without it. Well, it sure beats being psychoanalyzed by a stochastic parrot. Coffee, I'm hurt. Schizo, bro. All this negativity coming from my best customer. From the looks of it, I think I'm your only customer. So I'll try not to be gone. Wake up, Coffeezilla! Huh, famous last words. I wouldn't see anyone for a while. I was obsessed and the days flew by in a monotonous blur defined by a simple routine. Drive to the office in the morning, work till I could barely think, mm. and then head home after dark to get some sleep. People started asking if I was okay. I didn't even know how to answer them. The truth was either I would break this case or I would be broken by it. Sheesh. It is really cool that he does this. Uh, you know, it's very rare for a YouTuber to put in this much work. And like I said, I mean, this video is doing well, for sure. 2.8 million views, but that's, you know, that is two TikTok reacts from fucking Sniper Wolf. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this guy probably put in fucking four and a half months of hard labor. All right. I think I've got something. Uh, it's been several days of sleep deprivation and going through lots of files because, unluckily for me, a lot of people just go to their ate channel, bro. and they keep sending me stuff. So I had to go through everything, and after doing that, A, not doing great, B, I think I did find something, and I want to show you that, but not going to do that here because my back hurts, and this is the floor. So. Mm -hmm. All right, we're back. He Let's found the seal. About fake <laughs> trades. This whole case rests on whether Trader's Domain was making real trades or not. By the way, it, I would watch Sniper Wolf reacts to Coffeezilla's investigation. <laughs> I would actually prefer it. If she could chop this 45 minute video down to a nine minute video, of just her reacting to the good parts, I would, I, I would, I would have double the views. And then I could react to that. If it wasn't, it's a Ponzi scheme, end of story. Now, as part of this investigation, our first clue was that we found that Traders Domain uses the software Beta Broker on the back end to yep. make their trades. Yep. And we discussed how we found invoices from that company, and it looked like maybe they were B booking. But today, we discovered a lot more. I got leaked support chats between Beta Broker and Traders Domain themselves, the back end stuff. And I'm gonna show you what it revealed. Now, we're gonna talk about the authenticity of these documents in a moment, because they were leaked to me. So we have to be careful. But the headline of it is this Beta Broker wasn't just offering Traders Domain a software, Beta Broker appears to have been helping Traders Domain fake their trades hand in hand with them. And we're gonna prove all of this. Jesus. So here's what we have. We have leaked messages from the Beta Broker help desk. It's basically tech support. And we have screenshots between them and Traders Domain. Okay. So we can see what they were asking for help with. Here's an example. On the 4th of November, 2021, Traders Domain sends a message. They need help. Hi, please remove all orders for 1104 and restore this is such balance. fraud that's november 4th the response is hello we've received your request we will check and then dear david i believe this is the co-founder of traders domain david negus we would like to clarify with you one point we see that negative profit is visible on deals for 11:5, november 5th please clarify perhaps you meant removing orders for this date or still for 11:4. david responds yes for today's date now 
I know that seems like a lot, but it's actually simple what's going on here. Yeah. Trader's Domain is asking to remove losses they took in the past on trades so nobody sees that they're there. <laughs> now, they took these losses on the 5th of November, but David gets a little confused and thinks it's the 4th of November. So he asks them about removing those. But Beta Broker corrects them. And this is important because yeah, it means they know what's happening. They knew that the whole point of this is yeah. to fake yeah. a positive they trading. They completely history. get it. And then they're, and yeah. they say, well, hey, Complicit. you lost money today, not yesterday. Do you want us to delete today's <laughs> trades? So this is incredibly damning. But I want to be clear for legal reasons. I don't know if this is. Wait, Quack had a bad chat message. Atriot kind of looks like a disheveled version of CoffeeZilla right now. Sorry, sorry, bad chat message. They can't all be hits. I'm still waiting for the first hit, bro. <laughs> Thanks, Quack. Thanks for appreciating that. Is a rogue employee at Beta Broker doing this, or if this is a systemic thing and probably why people go to Beta Broker in the first place? I don't know the answer to that. But what I do know is that Traders Domain couldn't have done this by themselves. They showed themselves to be incredibly incompetent. Yeah. And Beta Broker was a huge part of their infrastructure to commit the crimes that they did. Now, here's another message. Hi, please remove all orders after 1330 GMT on 206487, which is an account number for Ted Safranco, and restore all balances to that time. The response this is, is this, so dear David, there are some profit deals could you please elaborate if we need to delete all deals for today after 13, <laughs> they just delete GMT? all In the other losses? Words, hey, maybe you just want us to delete the bad trades, not just the good <laughs> trades. And um, that doesn't sound like tech support to me. That sounds like criminal support. Yeah, in my opinion. 100%. And this shows in black and white how Traders Domain faked this whole thing. They would do these trades, but they would remove the losing ones and keep the winning ones to create a winning record that looked real in real time <laughs> because there were orders, right? But of course, what the customers didn't know is that those losing orders would all be quietly wiped away. And that's how this Ponzi scheme stayed afloat for so long. It looked like everything was real. They were very successful. Well, that's actually a pretty bad Ponzi scheme. If they're doing actual trades with it and just hiding their losses, they're still losing the money. Again, Bernie Madoff, the goat of Ponzi schemes, just made zero trades. All the trades were fake. He just kept all of his customers' money in one big bank account. <laughs> and if they asked for it back, he would give it to them out of that bank account. But because he kept lying and saying their money was going up with fake trades, they never wanted to take their money out. They just kept putting more money in. That was the ultimate scam. And that's why it worked for so long. So just lie. Well, yeah, I mean, you can't get away with it, but Bernie Madoff could because he was fucking chairman of the SEC at one point. But these guys are just taking your money and punting it on fucking trades and hiding the bad ones. Full at faking this stuff. Although, of course, in the end, it's also how it fell apart because as we showed in the first episode, Traders Domain's customers started catching on to the changing trades and they would talk about it openly. Yeah, he just changed the trades. It did, he just changed the exit. Yeah, dollar amount that he that he took on that trade. So this all lines up with what we know. Ted appeared to be trading in real time, but losing trades would suddenly vanish. And I know what you might be thinking. Well, look, this is great and all, but how do we know that these support chats are real? Maybe these are Photoshopped screenshots from upset customers. And I wanted to go ahead and validate the authenticity of these chats. It's a hard problem to solve. Yeah. And what I realized is we could actually compare these requests for order removals with what people were publicly reporting. And if those two things lined up, then these screenshots are very likely authentic. Yeah. And that's when I found this Reddit post showing two pictures of their trading account changing. Once when Ted had lost on a trade and then later that day when those same trades suddenly change, they <laughs> change where they closed. Now, just so you can read this, the blue arrows are the buys that Ted did and the red arrows are the sells. And as you can see from the first picture, Ted has lost money using the Wall Street bets trick of buying high and selling. <laughs> he bought here, bought here, bought here, bought here, bought here, bought here, bought here. It kept collapsing and he sold at the absolute bottom. What a fucking Chad, dude. He caught the falling knife. <laughs> Holy fuck, he just kept buying into the dip. That's crazy. And then it just kept going down. Woo, what a goat. That's funny because I don't know what the stock is, but right after a spike too. It spikes and as it's falling, he's like, yeah, this is the time to get in. <laughs> 
trash. Low. Now, he's going to solve this, though, with a very simple trick called fraud. Because in the mm. second picture, you can see that the trades have been adjusted and the story has changed. Now, suddenly, the cells are about breaking even with everything that was bought. Pretty amazing, right? Now, I want to be clear, this Reddit user posted these screenshots months ago, independent of the screenshots that I have. But when I looked at the support chats and cross-referenced them and the timeline with these trades happening on January 20th, I found a support ticket from Trader's Domain for that exact day. Please adjust all orders to close price of 1932.41 at 0927 GMT for both master account and all investor accounts. And the response is, dear client, you want us to adjust all today's master deals to close time 0927 and close price 1932.41. And then they list out the six deals. And David responds, yes, correct. And then the reply, all orders have been adjusted. And this is sure such enough, fraud. When we go look back at our Reddit post, it all lines up perfectly. And in the screenshots, Six trades were changed exactly to the price that was requested, 1932.41. Now, this is the smoking gun, undeniable proof of fraudulent fake trading straight from behind the scenes of Trader's Domain's own software provider. But I'm not finished because it's not. Uh, good question, though. Is there a seal? <laughs> I, I hate to be that guy, but I'm looking at all these fucking screenshots and I'm not seeing any seal. That makes me think this whole thing is fraud by CoffeeZilla, <laughs> okay? I don't want to be that guy, but I, I feel like at the end of this day, we should lock up CoffeeZilla for his seal-less crimes. Not enough to talk about if there was fraud. Where did the money go? Who is entitled to that money? Well, I think I discovered that too, because... I had 50,000 emails from Trader's Domain leaked to me, and I was trying to figure out how I could use these to reconstruct a map of how this Ponzi scheme worked, when suddenly I realized the answer was right in front of me. And that comes from the daily account statements. Now, okay. I think we've talked about this briefly, but the way Trader's Domain convinced people that this was all real is they sent a set of daily trades, fake trades to their customers, supposedly how much money they had made that day. It all looked very real, official. But in these statements, they had people's names in them, account numbers, and their balances. And I realized, well, I had several snapshots of these. And using this, I could reconstruct this whole thing. So here's what I did. Okay. I picked the day near the height of the Ponzi scheme, September 20th, 2022. It's right before withdrawals it's all not, that's stopped. Not... And I used a Python script to pull Sorry. all the emails. I ended up with 9,663 emails. And then I used that script to extract the account balance, the names, the account numbers. And I used that to create a spreadsheet to map this whole thing out. And using that, we find out a couple <laughs> important things. Firstly, <laughs> how much was owed in this whole thing? And the answer is 3.3 billion dollars <laughs> oh shit of course not all that money is real uh we have uncovered about 500 million dollars of real money that went in but that brings us to the second thing we can discover well yeah that there i mean so really it's a 500 million dollar fraud which is what his title says so he didn't he didn't lie people put in 500 million dollars of real money and then they were told that the trades went up and they, they had actually you know they had won 3.3 billion but it wasn't real. Which is who this money was owed to. And this is where all the pieces of our Ponzi fall in place, okay? Here are the biggest promoters, sponsors, and owners in Trader's Domain. Firstly, at the top of the list, we have Tintin, Ten, aka Tin Tran, with nearly a billion dollars. Now that <laughs> might surprise some of you, but keep in mind, he was the main account people would send money to, as we discovered in part one. The second largest holder is not surprising, Ted Safranco, the mm -hmm. guy who says he doesn't own any of this anymore. Well, on September 20th, 2022, he had $370 million. <laughs> Next up, we have somebody from Houston, an MLM promoter, Holton Bugs. He had $125 million. And if you remember, the first victims we spoke to, they talked to Holton and were shown huge account numbers. Now mm. we know how that was possible. Now, the fourth largest holder is Algo Capital, another sponsor we've known about for some time. Oh my God, it was the robot the, size, the whole time. $96 million. Mike Sims. The I'm robot not. in CoffeeZilla's coffee shop was actually behind the fraud. He's been fucking 
monitoring Coffee Zilla to learn the truth of the he's been behind the whole thing. That would be a twist if it was a movie, which would be cool. <laughs> That'd be a sick plot twist. He should just make this stuff up. At this point, Coffeezilla should just make up the whole fraud and make it a movie, like a TV show every week. <laughs> that'd be sick. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be hype as hell. Another big promoter is close behind with $84 million. And here, we can find some interesting connections, actually. He's been doing that. It allows yeah. us to discover Ponzi schemes within Ponzi schemes. Watch this. So, apparently, Mike Sims and Algo Capital work together, at least according to them. I have a role of serving as director of international business for Algo Capital, uh, which is a, a firm in Miami, Florida. Uh, we're also going to be expanding internationally here pretty soon as well. And we are a hedge fund. We're a hedge fund uh, and we specialize in Forex trading. Now, this is actually interesting <laughs> when you realize that Algo Capital was partnered with something called Omega Pro, which is an MLM Ponzi scheme, which purported to trade God, Forex. there's so many schemes. Which might sound familiar. This is just like walking through Miami, bro. <laughs> The entire economy of Miami is just like one scheme into another. It's, it's Ponziception. <laughs> a Forex crypto hedge fund, bro. And, and we're excited to be partnered with Omega Pro uh, on, on their vision. So it appears this is where a lot of the money came from was this other Ponzi scheme. Basically, Algo Capital and Mike Sims took money from that Ponzi scheme supposedly to trade. They funneled it into their own thing, which was built around this thing a Forex bot. But of course, that bot wasn't real. In reality, it seems like they forwarded that money into another Ponzi scheme, which is Trader's Domain. That's why I said Ponzi schemes within Ponzi schemes within <laughs> Ponzi schemes. Yeah, uh, it looks pretty bad. And actually, funny enough, do you know who one of the promoters of this Omega Pro was? Come on, let's go, come on. Jordan uh, Belfort. Uh, come on. Uh, 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 uh. That's right. That's so sad. When he goes around and does the thing from the movie. Oh, uh, no, dude. That's so cringe. <laughs> that's not your real life. That's from the movie, bro. It really be the ones you least expect. That's the sad thing. Jordan Belfer, I thought he was one of the good ones. The other is one of the good guys. Fuck, not the wolf himself, dude. All right. The scammer of Wall Street is back, Jordan Belfort. And I know some of you are thinking, wow, I thought he changed. Well, not so sure. There's only one way to get rich in this world, and that is quickly. You got to get rich quick. <laughs> I don't want to get rich slowly. Wait, this guy's fucking spinning. Talk to me about Omega Pro. Been saying that, dude. <laughs> There's only one way to get rich, and that is quickly. Oh, my God. This is so fucking fraudulent. I'm not talking about a get-rich-quick scheme. That's not <laughs> what I mean. way to get rich and that is quickly now i'm not talking about a get rich quick scheme <laughs> uh, there's only one way to structure this business and that is a pyramid <laughs> but i'm not talking about a pyramid scheme that's fucking funny uh, so i'm not advising you to go out and find some get rich quick scheme which this is not it's a legitimate business okay Actually, no, it isn't. None that of that's sounds true. sounds so scammy. You don't have to get rich quick. Omega Pro was a get rich quick scheme, and it wasn't a legitimate business. <sighs> Who could have guessed? Unfortunately for investors, Omega Pro has since collapsed at the same time Trader's Domain did. And right. so investors, ironically, got poor quick listening to a guy who got paid to speak. Yeah. Good job, Jordan. I hope that 300 grand you had locked within Future Gin LLC was worth it. And I hope you pulled it from Trader's Domain in time. But let's leave that sleaze ball and go back to another sleaze ball. Up next on our list of traders domain holders is Disruptive Tech with 59 million. Now, who is that? Sheesh. Well, the email associated is Gilbert Pardala, who calls himself an enthusiast of the blockchain. 
In fact, he's so enthusiastic. <laughs> hey, me too, brother. He's previously been detained for a different scam called Dagcoin. Dag I mean, coin. allegedly, guys. <laughs> allegedly. Up next, Dag we have Stormy coin. Wellington, another top 10. She's an influencer with $26 million in Trader's Domain, which may the explain why nine queen? months ago she posted a video called I Bought a Million Dollar Yacht Cash. I mean, how do you think? 14K views? <laughs> Should have bought some views. <laughs> explain why nine months ago she posted a video called I Bought a Million Dollar Yacht Cash. I mean, how do you think she did it, guys? It, it's a real mystery. Was it maybe that you were in a Ponzi scheme? I went out here and got it so all off of hard work and dedication. No lottery <laughs> ticket. No luck. <laughs> Darn it. Turns out it was hard work and dedication all along. Now, jokes aside, we could go one by one through all these people, but we'll be here all day. However, a lot it. of these people didn't just end up with millions of dollars out of nowhere. They have that because they took it from the victims that they took a cut from, that they brought into this whole scam. So just in case I haven't mentioned the person who you got scammed by, here's a list of the top 500 players in Trader's Domain. Jesus. If you have information on being scammed by them, you can contact me here to help with the investigation. Now, before we get to the final piece of this video, I wanted to just really briefly uh, come here and say, this is the most complicated investigation I've ever done. Yeah. And I couldn't have done it without the support Atrioc, of you're you right. guys out there. I, yeah, no um, problem. I'll take the credit. It, it, we've literally run out of wall. Think about that sentence. We're on the floor. I'm not exactly sure that says good things about my state of mind, but it's been so much fun. It's been one of the most gratifying things I've ever been able to do. Anytime, Coffee. Days. Anytime you need help, I got and you. And the mm. final question we have to answer is what's next for our villains? And the answer depends on which one. Michael Sims, Mr. Hedge Fund, is having his assets frozen by the CFTC. Tin Tran, an associate of Ted Safranco, is allegedly on the run from his Texas home with his assets frozen. Every single sponsor I spoke to claims that they were just innocent victims. Sure, they may have pulled millions of dollars into this fund, but they didn't have any idea it was a scam. And whether you find that credible, I'll let you decide. Here are the kinds of explanations they gave. Wait, you have 10 million pounds worth of clients with Ted? Yeah, so I've got loads of clients. I've got loads and loads of clients. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Actual dry powder, like dry powder capital? Yeah, the other day I had my guy put $460,000 in. And it's the the thing is, he this doesn't know. This guy doesn't understand. I, it's so This guy's bragging. <laughs> this guy's bragging to CoffeeZilla. He like thinks it... <laughs> it's like he's being interviewed for a fucking puff piece. Like, it... Oh, but he doesn't look at any of the trades. We kind of tell him at the end of the day but i was sold this as some like a uh, sort of get your friends in get your like family in get everyone in and it's solid it's nothing's going to go wrong so i brought all my clients from all the investments that i've ever done and brought them all over and now it's going to personally uh, i, I don't find this all that convincing just like i don't find ted safranco's excuses convincing uh and speaking of him he wasn't that happy about this video to come out and predictably, he has taken to social media to vaguely threaten me and my family. Mr. Stephen Fried Friedman or Fried's Friesman or whatever his name is, who goes by Coffeezilla. I don't think he's ever dealt with someone my size before. And you don't even have his last name, his family, bro. Because they don't have the resources I you have. You don't even have his last I'm name. Be you can't, you can't. I was very you called scared him freeze man <laughs> of Ted Safranco looking into me with his vast $370 million Ponzi money. But when he referred to me as Mr. Friesman, yeah. <laughs> I breathed a sigh of relief. I think I'll be okay. Now, where do we go from here? Why did I make this whole big docu-series? Well, I basically wanted to argue for two points, essentially. Number one, this fraud is much larger than the $145 million Ponzi scheme the CFTC is currently investigating, yep. in my opinion, okay? I think they only have a fraction of the people who are truly involved and a fraction of the dollar amount that was truly involved. I mean, we have crypto transactions proving a lot more. So that's number one. I think this is much bigger and the people who have been, been involved, it's a much longer list than they have. But the second problem, and it kind of ties in, is the crimes being charged and not charged, okay? Right now, Ted Safranco is only being charged with submitting falsified bank documents. Now, to put this in context, this would be like if Sam Bankman Freed's only crime being charged was for ordering too much DoorDash. I mean, did that happen? Maybe so. It'll be litigated. But um, Ted did a lot more than that, right? 
Okay. Well, if that was a crime, every streamer's going to fucking jail, bro. <laughs> I want you to know. Every streamer's doing fucking life behind bars if they start criminalizing DoorDash. So let's fucking relax. SBF is innocent. Poor Sam Bankman Freed. All he did was start a fucking fraudulent exchange <laughs> and take hundreds of millions of dollars of money and use it to try and buy politicians to get regulation for crypto that benefited him. It's just, a, it's crazy, people. The stuff we criminalize nowadays, we should be talking about family values. Okay, so did his co-founder, David Negus, who isn't being charged at all. So did Algo Capital, who told people this was a trading bot. <laughs> he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> he just wanted to play League of Legends. I was just trying to make a few bucks. Yeah, oh, sorry for, like, trying to do a little hard work. Sorry for trying to fucking incorporate in the Bahamas to avoid U.S. laws, but still get U.S. customers and slowly but surely defraud them out of their money. <laughs> Sorry. I guess if that's a crime, lock me up, you know? But it's like, all I want to do is take investor money and play League of Legends while I have a fucking 10-person sex cult with my employees in the top floor of the Bahamas. Is that such a crime? Algorithmic thing. And they were handing money over to Trader's Domain. They haven't been charged. Neither has Holton Bugs, Mr. Exotic Cars and Yachts. This just isn't right, in my opinion, okay? I think these people took advantage of this Ponzi scheme, got very rich. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you want to even forget for a moment the idea of justice being served or whatever, what I'm really afraid of is that they're just going to do it again. I'm just afraid we're going to make a repeat of the same mistake the Ontario Securities Commission made. Twice, by the way. A few years ago, they had this case. It slips through their fingers. And as a result, more people get hurt because it's not like Ted's going to stop, right? Already, he's looking to relaunch Trader's Domain That's under crazy. new names. I mean, the guy couldn't even take a year off scamming people. <laughs> His website already promises That's crazy. a migration of funds. So if people like Ted or his cronies get off easy, they'll likely do the same thing yep. all over yep, again. Yep, yep, only yep, they'll yep, probably yep. get better at hiding the scam. So I'm hoping for the sake of the victims, Ted and his goons, don't get away with this because at the end- But also, okay, let's just do a broad, I mean, just one second. Let's just do a broad, I think a really simple heuristic for analyzing an investment. If someone promises you high returns with low risk, it's a scam. <laughs> that Cause that's never existed. If you are getting large returns and they don't tell you that it's very risky, then it is a scam. <laughs> To get higher return, you have to increase the amount of risk you take. That's the whole thing. If you want low risk, then you have to get low return. You take interest payments from the bank or like fucking government bonds. You get 5%. That's pretty good. If you want more than 5%, if you want to double your money, go to Vegas. <laughs> Because if you want to double your money, you're going to have a, you're going to be a 60-40 dog. There's just there's no way that you're getting guaranteed higher. Nobody's doubling your money guaranteed it doesn't exist. It never has existed, it never will exist. And if you have that, then you'll pretty much be able to avoid all of these scams forever because they all follow the same pattern where they tell you that they have high returns with low or no risk. 60-40 would be great. That's what you get basically for blackjack, right? Six, no, 60-40 dog. I'm like you're a 40% chance. You can double your money by playing blackjack and you have about a 40% chance. That's not bad. <laughs> that's It's instant, immediate. Uh, but that's the best odds you're going to get to double your money. And anyone else that tells you they can do that guaranteed is lying. Was there a large risk in the big trade recently? Yes, absolutely. Of course. I put a ton of my money in a small cap stock. Yeah, of course. It was, a, it was, a, it was risky, but I, you know. Roulette is 50 50. No, that's the green ones. Roulette is not 50 50. Roulette's like fucking at best 47 or something like that. 47%. Um, just be the son of a billionaire that goes in the submarine to the Titanic. Didn't the son die? Is your solution to die? <laughs> that's your solution to this problem is to, is to die in a sub? I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. That's who matters here, right? The victims. Oh. I mean, Yes, I'll be honest, there are probably some unsympathetic investors in this thing, right? People like Jordan Belfort, people like Mike Sims, who scammed so many people. So it's tempting to say, okay, well, how did anyone fall for this? It's such an obvious scam. Maybe you think some of the people aren't sympathetic, but like all Ponzi schemes, at the bottom of this thing, you just find regular people who are trying to make a better life for themselves. And some of them didn't even know they were in Trader's Domain. For example, leaked emails I discovered showed a pension fund was invested in this Jesus. thing. Jesus. Called the Bergie Pension Fund. 
It got apparently funneled through Oppenheimer and Bishop and Associates. Oh my appears God. To have been then it is put an ARG. With Renaissance Consulting, which was then placed in Trader's domain. And I kept seeing that. Regular people investing their livelihood, mortgages, college savings. Some of them had no idea they were invested in Trader's Domain. They just put their money with a guy they trusted who put that money with another guy and another guy and another guy. And before you know it, you're in a Ponzi scheme. So those people... I'll be honest, the amount of people that have lost money to fraud, even small amounts, but small amounts add up in the past two years is just, it's so staggeringly sad. I think there's just so many average people that lost a few thousand in crypto meme coins, AMC, Doge, you know, and it's like not enough to fucking ruin their life, but it's enough to just like constrain options. Consulting, which was then placed in traders domain. And I kept seeing that regular people investing their livelihood, mortgages, college savings. Some of them had no idea they were invested in traders domain. They just put their money with a guy they trusted who put that money with another guy and another guy and another guy. And before you know it, you're in a Ponzi scheme. So those people didn't deserve this. And this video series is for those people, the regular people who lost money in this. Mm -hmm. They deserve justice because YouTube investigations, look, it's great. I love doing this. It's not enough, right? Awareness, subscribers, it's great. It's cool, comments, it's not enough. Trader's Domain has hurt a lot of people and the people in charge need to be held fully accountable and I cannot do that. So for now, our story ends here. Mm -hmm. Hey, coffee. Brooding as usual? Is this why you called? So you can have a buddy to play the depressed detective with? No, I came here for some peace and quiet. And, you know, I guess I wanted to apologize about the whole stochastic parrot thing. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't mean it. Nah, I couldn't stay mad at you. The bar would be out of business. Yeah, to be honest, I'm surprised you guys lasted so long. What has it been, like, a few weeks? Speaking of that, what happened with that Ponzi scheme you were investigating? Oh, yeah, that's over. I mean, Ted's still free. Sponsors deny everything. Crazy Ted's still free. I guess you could say I'm still missing my perfect ending. Oh, well, I guess I'm sorry. I really thought you just needed more evidence. No, nah, you were right to push me. I mean, it helped, and you were right about a lot of things. Well, I'm always <laughs> Are right. they going to kiss? <laughs> uh... What was that other thing I was right about? <laughs> you know, I think you said something about uh, enjoying the next best thing with a friend. Oh, oh right. maybe more that. than friends. Well, I can't drink, though. Yeah, I thought about that, so I picked up something on my way here. You like a little bit of juice, right? Coffee. You didn't. I did. I did. Premium grade stuff right here. Premium grade stuff, huh? A nine volt? <laughs> What, you couldn't get a bigger battery with all that Patreon money? It's not the size of the battery, I gotta keep you sharp. robot. Who do you think's gonna drive me home? Cheers, by the way, my friend. Friend? That's a new one. I like a little better than Stochastic Parrot. Yeah, well, don't be too flattered. I think it's more of an indictment of my social life than anything else. Well, I, for one, am honored to be your first indictment on this case. Does this mean I'm like a sidekick now, too? No. <laughs> I don't have sidekicks. Coffeezilla <laughs> doesn't have sidekicks. I think you're wrong. I'm already your best friend. I make you drinks. And I drive you around. Okay, that sounds I feel like, like an employee. Is in order. <laughs> I said you were a friend. And I work alone. Yeah, a. Imagine there's 50 minutes left of this video. <laughs> Like, it just slowly stops talking about the fucking Ponzi scheme around halfway. <laughs> Best friend, who also moonlights as a sidekick. You're impossible. I think I'll go by Dr. Maxwell. And with that, we'll see you guys next week. Wow. Oh, no, no, don't do that. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just thinking the wonderful Dr. audience. Dr. Maxwell. Watching. No, you new do. character. You're doing that thing where you play us out while trying to pretend that this whole sidekick thing is happening. It's not happening. We'll see y'all real soon. Sidekick thing is happening, and I love every one of you. And the dynamic duo is back indefinitely next week, every week. Wait, 
I can't even do every week. This took me like four months. <laughs> a boy and his robot. You won't want to miss it. Click here to see more videos as we zoom out and fade into black. All Nothing right. Left to say, 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 say. Bravo, Dr. Maxwell. Great video, great research. Copyzilla is the goat. Jordan Belfort responded, and it's pretty short. Jordan Belfort has responded to my allegations, and I want to talk about it. Some of you may know Jordan from The Wolf of Wall Street, which is based on his life as a scammer. More recently, he's in hot water for being involved in another scam, Omega Pro, and having money in a $500 yeah. million Ponzi scheme. This was the clip he had of being like, it was like, you got to get rich quickly. This 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 uh, company will get you rich quickly, but it's not a get rich quick scheme. <laughs> the, yeah, you said the only way to get rich is quickly, but this is not a get rich quick scheme. Now I reached out to Jordan about this ahead of time, and his team's response was that I was being wildly misleading. So oh. even though it's not a big deal because he's kind of a a small fish in this whole thing, deal because he's kind of a is being. It's wildly misleading as it's only the first half of the quote. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you need a second half of the quote when you say the only way to get rich is quickly. <laughs> Cause that first of all, that part alone is not true. There's no, if the, if the second half is psych, I lied then. Okay. It's fine. But if it's anything else, then it's probably still a bad quote. Oh, even though it's not a big deal. Cause he's kind of a, a small fish in this whole thing. Mm. I wanted to settle it because it's a little bit annoying when people tell me I'm taking them out of context when in fact, everything that I'm saying is completely correct. So we will be reading oh. their whole response to me to make sure you get the full context. And oh I'll no. Warn you in advance, they're gonna try to trick us. Let's start off right from the top. Hi Jordan, my name is CoffeeZilla. I'm an investigative journalist. I noticed you had a balance of $325,000 with Trader's Domain on September 20th, 2022. Okay. Via your company, FutureGen LLC, and also participated as a paid spokesman of some kind. Yeah, I mean, Omega this is just reading Both a long legally's document. I might not read it. Ponzi schemes. And they said the following in response. Mr. Belfort is not, nor has ever been, a paid spokesman of Omega Pro. He actually declined their offer. Omega Pro hired Mr. Belfort to speak at two of their events about... Okay, that... <laughs> He's not a spokesman, he's a speaksman. Okay, there's a big difference. Yes, he stood up on stage and showed their product at their events. Sales and entrepreneurship. I, I know you're confused. You think maybe I had a stroke. No, I'm reading it exactly how they said it. He says, I've never been hired as a paid spokesman, but I have, I have actually gotten hired twice. <laughs> Let me explain it to you. Spokesman <laughs> means you're endorsing the business as a legitimate business. Right. Which Mr. Belfort obviously would never do. So I'm not advising you to go out and find some get rich quick scheme, which this is not. It's a legitimate <laughs> business, okay? Not understanding how they're saying he's not a paid spokesman here since he was paid and seems to be a spokesman. Mm. Either way, they continue. Mm. These were two of over 150 events that Mr. Belfort spoke at that year, and he has never had any affiliation with the company and only vaguely knows what they do. <laughs> It's almost worse. So that means you'll just take money, go on stage and say, this is a great legitimate business when you have no idea what they do. And I had to laugh at this part because I'm just thinking to myself like, yeah, isn't it that funny moment we can all relate to when you're speaking? I mean, is this guy's entire life now just going from uh, scam to scam conferences and doing the sell me this pen and the, the Wolf of Wall Street stuff? <laughs> Does he just like trade on the fact that that movie was about him and people took the wrong lesson from it? <laughs> at the biggest event of the year for a company in Panama and you have no idea what they do. Sounds really reasonable, guys. Make sure sounds, they get the sounds legit. In fact, during his speech with Omega Pro, he specifically stated that he was not there to speak about their business or making investments as he was unfamiliar with what they do. Mm. Now, it's at this point we're going to have to talk about Jordan's get-rich-quick claims because that's another part of my question of them. Because in this speech where he has no idea what the business is, Jordan claims you got to get rich. He did say it's a legitimate business in the speech. We, when we saw the clip, that alone kind of shuts the case. Like, well, I almost don't need the rest of this. <laughs> it's quick, which, you know, is a bit of a red flag when you're talking about a get rich quick scheme. There's only one way yep. 
to get rich in this world. <laughs> and that is quickly. You gotta get rich quick. Not surprisingly, Jordan had an issue with the fact I said I was gonna play that clip. His team said in response, the above quote you provided is wildly misleading as it is only the first half of the quote. The full quote from the transcript is below and Mr. Belfort stands by it to this very day. Ah. And I'm gonna jump to the second half of the quote because you've already read the first part. You got to get rich quick, okay? And the reason for that is because we live in a world that's far too expensive to get rich slowly. Mm. You can't get rich slowly over time between inflation and currency devaluations and all the hard work. By the time you get rich, it's too late. But I'm not too fucking about late. A get rich quick scheme. That's not what I mean. <laughs> I'm not advising you to go out and find some get rich quick scheme, which is not a legitimate business. Now, I know what you're thinking. I just got roasted. I thought the same thing. I thought maybe I was wrong about Jordan Belfort. Poor guy is getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to mm. talk about a company he knows nothing about, and he's being criticized for it. I mean, I couldn't believe it, what I had almost done, because I hadn't made the video yet, mind you. I was requesting for comment, and I was about to apologize uh, when I actually watched the real video and remembered the full quote. You got to get rich <laughs> quick, okay? And the reason for that is because we live in a world that's far too expensive to get rich slowly. You know, Warren Buffett made the majority of his wealth after age like 70. <laughs> he made more money between 70 and 90 than he did between 30 and 70. He did it fast as fuck after he turned 70 though. Yeah, he did it fast as fuck. <laughs> yeah, it turns out he was actually broke at 70, not uh, already incredibly wealthy. And then fast as fuck. He just, he watched one of these courses actually and then turned it on. You just can't get rich slowly over time between inflation and currency devaluations and all the hard work it tells. By the time you get rich, it's too fucking late. And I will tell you this. This is mm. a fact. I'm not talking about a get rich quick scheme. That's not what I mean. <laughs> so I'm not advising you to go out and find some get rich quick scheme, which this is not. It's a legitimate business, okay? Ah, that's a subtle difference between the quote they wrote <laughs> and the quote of what he said. Because in the one they wrote, I'm not advising you to find some get rich quit scheme, which is not a legitimate business. <laughs> that's not what he said. Which this is not. It's a legitimate business, okay? Did you catch it? Jordan's team has conveniently edited the quote from, I'm not advising you to go out and find some get rich quick scheme which this is not, meaning Omega Pro <laughs> is not a get rich quick scheme. It's a legitimate business, okay? And they changed it to say this. So I'm not advising you to go out and find uh, some like get weird. rich quick scheme, which up, is not a legitimate business. It's a totally different meaning. In one of them, you're endorsing the company. In the real one, you're calling it a legitimate business. In the fake honest quote, mistake, honest mistake. Me, all of that context is gone. This man loves scamming. Yeah, I do think like if you're in that crowd, how can you see the guy famous for scamming people tell you it's you got to get rich quickly, but it's not a get rich quick scheme and not have some red flags raised? How could you not be like, okay, I'm dumb if I invest in this. It's a big runs day. I wonder why. Maybe it's because it shows that Jordan is at least pretending to know what this company does. Because you wouldn't call something a legitimate business if you had no idea what... Someone said the funniest part is that the logo of this company is just a stock graph going up. <laughs> Did they show it again? Wait, maybe we'll see it. Yeah, we'll see they it again. They did, right? They also left out another part where Jordan tells the crowd, What's up, it's Adamus? great that you all believe in Omega Pro, but don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Don't second guess it. Just look a around you. Yeah, that's their logo. <laughs> in case you didn't need more convincing, the arrow's going up, so you know. Who can smell money? Can you smell the money? Yes. <laughs> Lana, can you smell it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> bro, this dude's such a fucking scammer, bro. Why is that? Why is that? Why is it that within this room right now, there is so much success, <laughs> so much money being made? Why? Why is that? <laughs> Well, a couple of things. Number one, there's a lot of belief in the room. You all believe in what you're doing. You believe.
believe in the cause, you've been making money yourself, you've been able to convince others to do the same, to join up and to make money, right? That's what's going on here. So there's belief. But I will tell you this, there's an old saying that we have in English. And that saying goes, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. This is such a Meaning these, these types of moments in each one of your lives. This is almost comical. It's like such an obvious fraud. You get the guy from the fraud movie to come on and say get rich quick scheme and then say don't look too much into it. They don't come along that often. They just don't. <laughs> this is insane. In fact, you could replace Omega Pro with literally any penny stock that Jordan was selling back in the day that he got arrested. Yeah. And it feels like the same it's the thing. same speech. The whole thing about like, I, you know, there's so much money here. You believe. This is an incredible opportunity. But just don't look look at it too closely. Don't look a gift horse <laughs> in the mouth. It's barely going to come back again. You know, it's once in a lifetime. This is the same thing. It's the same scam. Just a new way to do it, right? He is it's running the same scam. It's Omega Pro nonsense. And they had the audacity to leave that quote out, twist another quote, and then try to, what, get me to walk back what I was going to say? Now, finally, we're going to get to the last claim of mine, which is that Jordan had money locked in Trader's Domain, which, once again, they told me that I was being wildly misleading about. Uh, but then they said this. As far as Trader's Domain goes, Mr. Belford has no knowledge of Trader's Domain or any link that they may have had with Omega Pro other than that a very close friend of his said that he was making a lot of money with a managed account. Wait, so he fell he for the scheme? Mr. Belfort to give this money manager a shot. So Mr. Belfort made a small speculative investment there of approximately 200. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> George Belfort not only chilled for Omega Pro, but then fell for a separate Ponzi scheme? Thousand dollars. Small investment of $200,000? Who in their right mind? Look, bear in mind, this guy is like a scam professional, right? He did it for years. He then puts money in a thing that seems too good to be true, offshore Forex brokerage with zero research. Like we're supposed to believe that? I mean, personally, I don't believe it. That Jordan Belfort is looking at this thing. I mean, it could looks be dumb. Like probably what he used to sell and goes, yeah, this seems like a good opportunity. <laughs> uh, according to them, quote, after a few months of seeing profits, Mr. Belfort felt that it was too good to be true and requested his money back. <laughs> That's when the problem started. It took many months and constant legal threats to get back his original investment. Oh, he got it back. He eventually got back with a small profit. So he did make money. What are we wrong about? It's so funny. Like, they claimed I was being wildly misleading, but both of the things I'm alleging here, that he was yeah, our and true. a rich-quick scheme and seeming to pitch it, basically. That's true. He also had money in Trader's Domain. Also true. He apparently made money with it, which we didn't even know. Mm -hmm. But also, we have to seriously interrogate whether Jordan knew nothing about Trader's Domain, just like we had to with Omega Pro, because they then say, quote, he then closed his account, and that was that. He would be willing to discuss off the record <laughs> more of what he suspects is happening there, <laughs> as some of his friends were convinced to open up an account there by the same person, never got their money. This feels like it's not even like a, a lawyer writing. It's like Jordan Belfort basically writing it himself, pretending he's an assistant or something. <laughs> this feels like Jordan writing directly under, you know, as his <laughs> money back. And just to be clear, despite this managed account offering Mr. Belfort a 10% override in any money he could bring in, he never recommended it to any other person because from the very beginning, he always considered it a speculative investment <laughs> and had done no due diligence. Rather, he made the investment based on the word of a friend. Let me get this straight. Jordan knows nothing about Trader's Domain, no due diligence. But if we talk off the record so that I can't say what he says, he's claiming he's going to explain what's happening. Are you kidding? Hey, listen, I know nothing about this, but if we go behind closed doors, I'll explain the whole thing. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's nonsense. I, I mean, look. You just don't get it, coffee. You just and don't of get course, it. The reason I'm talking about this is not because Roman Acio, they've been seven months. Was like the big player in all this. He was not by a long shot. I only bring up his response as an exemplary way that these influencers and speakers, they just want to have it both ways. Look, they want to make all the money when they speak, right? All the money. Wild speaking fees of hundreds of thousands of dollars, supposedly. And then when it all goes wrong, they want to be held to zero accountability. Yeah, like everyone who, who way, shilled FTX. They don't want you to look a gift horse in the mouth. 
even when it bites you. F it, you already paid me, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he said that on stage. <laughs> Uh, it's fun. Jordan Belfort is just such a blatant scammer that it's almost like he's so there's no duplicity to it almost it's so blatant Jim Cramer's the same no Jim Cramer's not the same as fucking Jordan Belfort Jim Cramer's just an idiot Jim Cramer's just like is like a TV personality that hypes up stocks he's not a scammer he doesn't make money off you making the bet does this mean we get a sequel to Wolf of Wall Street soon it would be such a sadder movie <laughs> If Wolf of Wall Street 2 is just Jordan Belfort like going on speaking tours for fucking small time scams, you know, in his fucking 50s and 60s, it, it's, it's, there's not the same. He's not taking hundreds of millions on Wall Street. The Husky of Wall Street? No, it's like the Wolf of fucking downtown Miami suburbs. No Margot Robbie? Yeah, she would not be in this sequel. It would be someone else. Inverse Kramer's how he makes money. He shorts and then he pumps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jim Kramer bets against himself and then... <laughs> but then that means... <laughs> He could just say the opposite. If he knows that he's always wrong, just say the opposite. 